Thank, Thank you so you. much, CSUMB. I would like to introduce Angelica, who will take it away. Great. So, uh, Leslie, do we have a hard stop at 1130? No. Okay, so we can go a little bit over. All right, so yeah. we're still going to try to keep um, uh, each individual section to five minutes. And so since we're getting started a little bit a little bit late, I'll... I'll uh, I'll try to keep us on track here and on time. So welcome everyone. Thank you for being here. So this is the uh, September uh, Platica, CSMB and Cabrillo. This is part of our uh, two plus two pathway. And so I don't know, Leslie, how much you want me to get into the history of the two plus two pathway and um, the uh, partnership between VPA and Cabrillo. I think just a little blurb about that would be great. I talked to my students a little bit about that. So what we, you know, we've been meeting for quite some time now, uh, 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 CSUMB uh, VPA faculty and VPA stands for visual and public art. And so if I start talking in acronyms, if I see a little hand go up, please, please stop me so that I can um, better uh, explain and outline uh, which each of these uh, uh, acronyms uh, are referring to. Uh, that said, um, VPA, when I refer to VPA, that's visual and public art. So uh, what it is that we are doing here is we're part of a, of a larger grant to establish um, formal two plus two pathways and transfer pathways uh, with Cabrillo students. And so we're here very specifically and excited to tell you a little bit more about the visual and public art program at CSUMB and introduce you to some of our, our students, our former students and some of our faculty as well. And so I'm gonna do a brief um, overview. It's a lot to cover um, in the amount of time we have, but I'll try to get through it. So. If it seems like I'm rushing through it, it's because um, I kind of am, and I'm trying to fit the most amount of information that we can into um, this session. So if someone, uh, I, I'm not keeping track of the chat here, Leslie, so I'm imagining that you're doing that, yes? Sure. Great, yeah. fantastic. And welcome also, uh, Sharon Anderson, who is um, not only the, the Dean of Advising here at CSUMB, but also um, we're very fortunate to have her as VPA's academic advisor. So thank you, Sharon. All right, so oh, there's the agenda for today. Uh, okay, so we are the Visual and Public Art Department. Uh, our, the, some of the core tenets here, if I can summarize them um, briefly, are cultural entrepreneurship, social practice, and reciprocity. And so here you have some of our students working on a public art project um, in the painting studios. Uh, I want to give you a little bit of history. It would be really difficult to summarize our, our 25 year long history and the amount of time that we have, but um, we very much are, are based on a founding mission, um, which is community engagement and reciprocity. Um, we were one of the first programs really in the nation to really um, start thinking about community engaged practices um, at the university setting and at the university level in terms of teaching social practice, um, community engagement and reciprocity. Um, so some of our founding faculty members are Judy Baca, Suzanne Lacey, Amalia Mesa Baines, and Stephanie Ann Johnson. So uh, here are some uh, images of work that they've done, some uh, for, uh, photos of them. And so just to uh, further give you a little history there, Judy Baca is a recognized pioneer in the field of social practice. Um, her work deals with the urban environment and the people that were within it. Um, she's probably most well known for uh, designing and implementing uh, the Great Wall of LA. Uh, Suzanne Lacey is a pioneer of social engaged practice and uh, public practice. Um, and she's probably most well known for coining the term new public genre and I was doing uh, public art projects all, all over the world. Uh, Amalia Masabain is a MacArthur Fellow, internationally renowned artist, um, really well known for her altars, um, uh, coined the term uh, domesticana and, and, and uh, chicana rascochismo and, and theorizes domesticana. Um, and has a really amazing exhibit at the, um, uh, uh, the San Francisco uh, Museum of Art right now. And then uh, Stephanie Ann Johnson, who is here with us today. You all lucky to, to have Stephanie with us. Um, and so Dr. Johnson is an award-winning interdisciplinary artist. Her focus um, and her scholarship is on policy. Um, and she's also uh, an acclaimed award-winning lighting designer. And so uh, she'll, she'll talk to you more a little here. So what makes the VPA program different from um, other programs and other arts programs in the CSU? Um, is our core values. And that's that we're combining um, practice um, theory, historical and contemporary analysis, positionality, community and collaboration, and reciprocity. So here you have an image on the on the right here of uh, one of our capstone students. 
capstone projects. So the VPA major equips students with the skills of art making, ethical inquiry, self-reflection, visual literacy, empathy, um, reciprocal community engagement skills in order to address critical issues. And Dr. Johnson will talk to you more about um, capstone very specifically. Um, our mission as a department is to observe um, uh, our, you know, our mission statement in the context of social justice and equity frameworks. And so our, our program is comprised of arts leaders, scholars, educators who are committed to mentoring the next generation of diverse, creative community leaders. We teach our students to be uh, the drivers of meaningful change through strategic scaffolding, learning and outcomes, sorry, and pointed social and community engagement. Um, and the images you're showing are all part of the VPA program, and, and many, many of the images we'll, you'll see today are student work. Um, and our curriculum very pointedly focuses on seven major learning outcomes. I'm not going to go through all of these, but here are some of the outcomes. And you can always go to our website, um, both our auxiliary website, which is visualandpublicart.com, or our, our university website, which has all this information as well. And, you know, our pedagogical approach is tiered, um, uh, meaning that we have uh, full time tenure track faculty who are actively engaging in their own pseudo practice as well as regional community engagement. And then we have adjunct faculty who have an established history of teaching and exhibition record and project based community engagement and social practice. And then we also have a faculty and training program where we bring back alumni that are engaged in valuable mentor and we engage them invaluable mentoring and community engaged practices in order to give them um, sort of that boost to to go to the next run in this level and, and be able to um, be competitive out in the teaching field. Uh, we have lots and lots of uh, public art projects that we do. I won't um, discuss every single one of them individually, but I will I, I have some slides here. So here's a project that we did with um, CCA, the Center for Community Advocacy in Salinas. Um, if you go to our website, you'll see videos that the students also did uh, for that project. Um, we've done a, a lot of projects um, uh, with uh, Chinatown Salinas. Um, here's one of the projects we did on the oral history projects. Um, here's some images from that project. And over the years, we've done quite a few projects um, in, in uh, Chinatown Salinas. Here's a project uh, for painting a mural in the Pajaro Valley. And then we have uh, a major service learning component. Every student that comes to CSUMB has to fulfill a, a, you know, a certain amount of hours of uh, service learning. Um, it's a core tenant of our institution. And for VPA, here are, are many of our partners. All right, so with that said, uh, I'll hand it over to uh, Dr. Stephanie Johnson. Great, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Angelica. So. Um, as Angelica has said, I'm a founding faculty member of the VPA program. Um, and our approach is unique. We were one of, one of the first programs to actively promote engagement with local communities at the core, at the core. So it wasn't an ancillary idea that could float away, but it's at the core of our program. Um, our senior capstone course is a two semester experience in which students create proposals uh, for the end of the semester exhibition. And at the end of the fall semester, they have a faculty review. Um, artist students are required to show examples of previous work, a concept statement, sketches, and a budget for your proposed project. These are valuable skills as they move toward the end of their academic undergraduate career and begin their career as artists. VPA graduates have gone on to become exhibiting artists, illustrators, arts administrators, museum professionals, curators, educators, and other rewarding fields. And I hope that the Cabrillo students will join us on this amazing journey of creativity, self-discovery, and service. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Stephanie. All right, so next we have... <laughs> Next, we have Professor Junius Mendoza, and uh, Professor Mendoza is going to talk about mentorship opportunities. Um, and then at the end, uh, we have a slide on the uh, new replicative media uh, studios. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me. Um, we're really excited to be part of this platica. So, so I'm going to begin by, by asking the like the the hardest question here that I think most of us uh, think about, or I know your parents uh, definitely think about. Um, you know, when you tell them that you want to be an artist, right? 
And that, that is, uh, what are you gonna do with an art degree? What are you gonna do with a, 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 an undergraduate art degree? And Professor Johnson uh, mentioned some of the things that some of our graduates have done. But here at the Bishop of Public Art Department, we're not here to teach you how to be an, uh, just a regular artist. There's a whole bunch of programs that focus on studio art practices that are out there that are great. We're here to teach you how to be a critical thinker. Yeah? You need to be a critical thinker. So once you become a, a critical thinker uh, and uh, going through like the capstone process that uh, Professor Johnson has mentioned, it's, it's really gonna help you to become that critical thinker and, and be able to be a responsible ethical artist to go out into your community and empower your community. Uh, one of the things that, that I wanna talk about is mentorship and, and uh, we're big on mentorship here at the Vision Public Art Department. I benefit myself from mentorship uh, growing up. I'm a first generation student that came from Mexico and uh, you know, came to King City and basically went through the immigrant experience. And so I know for a fact that all my accomplishments that I made up to now have a lot to do with people that I met along the way that kind of helped me to get you know, where I am. Uh, some of the things that we do here at the, the Vision Public Art Department is really like one-on-one -on -one mentorship. I think our classes are, are really beautifully designed so that uh, there's a, an average of like 16 students per uh, studio class. So you really get an opportunity to, to work with the uh, uh, faculty teaching the class one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, our average graduating class uh, per year is around 24 students. So we have really beautiful small uh, uh, program. It is important to, to say that we don't have a graduate uh, component, right? Which means that all of our focus is, is dedicated to the undergrad students that we're teaching. Uh, all of our faculty that, that we have here, uh, they have their own uh, professional practices, which means that they're doing projects outside into, in the community, whether it be public art projects or exhibiting in, in uh, museums and galleries, as well as nonprofits. And so that mentorship is important because uh, you, if you come here, you'll be exposed to actual uh, practices uh, outside of uh, the classroom and, and see what, what actual professional, quote unquote, professional artists are doing. And that's extremely, extremely valuable. Um, other opportunities that, and partnerships that we have here, uh, we're uh, very unique in that uh, we have created a lot of uh, you know, possibilities and opportunities for our students. And, and all of these are, are basically uh, one of a kind in the CSU system. One of those uh, opportunities that we have for our graduates, here, for our uh, capstone students here, is uh, we have partnerships with the community. And so one of our partners is the Waste Management uh, District, which is the slide that you see in, uh, right now. And so we created a, a program where we uh, give an opportunity to one, sometimes there's three students that apply, uh, the whole capstone class applies and then one to three students will get awarded a fellowship to work at the last chance mercantile, which means that uh, you know the work has to do with, with environmental issues. Uh, and then they'll get a, a stipend with that, they'll get a studio to work at and then a solo exhibition at the end of their, their uh, you know, residency there. Uh, these are great opportunities, uh, you know, because it allows students not only a way of kind of building their resume and graduating here with like credits on the resume, professional credits on the resume. But also I think that leads uh, to other artists in residency programs that they can apply after, after they graduate. Uh, another uh, thing that we have here is we have an amazing uh, painting and mural uh, class, right? And once again, we're probably like uh, one of the few or the only CSU, uh, um, California State University that teaches that specific class. And our professor that teaches the class is Matt Floriani and he's, he's an amazing uh, accomplished uh, muralist uh, that actually is doing projects in the community. And he, so therefore he uh, extends uh, his knowledge to the, to the class. And so if you come and take that class, you should be able to be able to create professional um, murals after you, you, know, you graduate as well. Another uh, other opportunities that, that we have is, uh, uh, as uh, Chair Muro mentioned, you know, we, we uh, collaborate with, uh, with a lot of the, the local, uh, you know, community members. And one of our community members is is the Monterey Museum of Arts, which uh, there's uh, there's definitely uh, opportunities for students to do internships there, as well as the Alice Center for the Arts in Salinas. 
And uh, recently, I, I'm working on, a, on another uh, uh, bigger uh, collaboration with up north with Sarah and, and Don Lucas Artists in Residency Program, which is at the Villa Montalvo Art Center. And we're trying to get a grant to, to get take some of our students and, and have like a paid internship with them as well. And so we're constantly thinking about our students' future. Uh, a lot of the students that graduate with us um, after they go to different places like Mills, uh, San Jose State, we have people in, in uh, you know, in different universities at the moment. Uh, uh, they're, they're constantly in touch with us. And so we continue our mentorship way after you graduate. And so that's important to kind of uh, point out. And I think we have such an amazing uh, little jewel here at, at CSUMB um, that I think we want to maintain and we will invite all of you to kind of check us out. Another thing that I'm going to ask and I tell all the students that want, want to know more about our program is to find out about our program, but definitely go check out other programs because you'll be surprised, you know, how, how well equipped we are with studios. Uh, we have a, an amazing here, one, we have an amazing uh, one of a kind, once again, uh, screen printing lab, right? It's fully equipped. It has a, an eight, a eight station, eight color, six station uh, octopus, we have full on uh, uh, dark room with uh, washout boots and exposure units. And so we're trying to teach you cultural entrepreneurship uh, models to be able to go into your community, empower your community and make even make a, like a small business after you graduate if that's what you choose to do. That's all I have for you. Thank you for, for uh, your time. Thank you, Professor Mendoza. All right, so next we have uh, a treat for you all. We have uh, two uh, VPA alum who are gonna talk about um, um, their experience at VPA as well as the uh, work that they're doing now. And so our first presenter, and I'll stop sharing my screen, is going to be uh, Samantha Saldana. And she graduated last year. She's VPA class of 2020. And Samantha is currently a grad student in the um, San Jose State University uh, photo graduate program. So I'll stop sharing and uh, Samantha, you can go ahead and share your screen. All right, give me a second. Hi everyone, um, I'm having issues. Give me one moment, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I can't seem to share my screen. Um, so sorry, do you guys wanna move on to Ashley and then you can come back to me? Let's go ahead, we'll, we'll move over to Ashley and then you can figure that out. If you want, you can also send it to me, Samantha, and I can try to see if I can pull it up. All right, so uh, our uh, other pr uh, presenter is Ashley Vaughn and Ashley, um, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe your class of 2019, yes? Yes, 2019. Um, and Ashley just uh, finished up her, her the graduate program at San Jose State University as well. All right, go go ahead, Ashley. Hi, my name's Ashley, and I'm going to talk about my time at, uh, within the Visual and Public Art program and my capstone of 2019. So, um, I too was a student at Cabrillo College, having dreams of. Um, a career in arts and education. And so I returned to Cabrillo after a break in 2017 and completed some transferable um, associates degrees and also a transfer agreement um, to CSUMB. And it was in this time through research that I discovered the compatibility and uniqueness of um, the visual and public art program. So my work has always centered uh, around the subjugation of the indigenous female, although I didn't know how to properly articulate it um, until later in life. Um, so uh, now I'm gonna talk about the VPA program in Capstone. Um, the core values of the program aligned with my own multilingual, multicultural, gender equitable, um, rooted in arts as activism, um, it, uh, changing the face of institutional education, um, com um, community involvement and awareness, and grassroots-based understandings that I knew from my own upbringing. 
um, uh, and the, the uh, essentialness of mentorship, which was understood by the program. Um, the program not only helped me with real life skills to navigate higher education and the art world, but also facilitated emotional and interpersonal healing and growth that was really important for me through our community, art making, and the capstone project. This is the capstone cohort of 2019, and it really was um, a community um, moving together. So the capstone work produced was um, produced the work that transcends medium specificity that is like very typical of arts and education. I received the MRWMD artist in residency um, and made work focusing on the rewiring of the brain that happens during a traumatic event. I am a complex trauma survivor and gained much personal growth through this project. This is um, how the project fleshed out and it is entitled place word here. So all of the smaller components that were paper mache on to the doors are photo based and were made um, mostly in the dark room and then other ways of um, paper mache materials onto the doors. I'm now gonna talk about my time in graduate school within SJSU's photo program. Um, so the transition to grad school was very smooth. I graduated from SJSU in the spring of 2022 with an MFA um, in photography. Uh, I received continued mentorship from everybody that I reached out to um, in the program and um, was also equipped with this practical knowledge that I gained in my time at VPA, not only to navigate the university system, but also um, uh, uh, to stay true to my own practice and my own core values while navigating this system. This is my work. It's entitled The Mission Project. Um, I completed it in the spring of 2022. Um, there was also a video component. And these are details from the mission project, which included familial um, archival uh, photographs and negatives that I sourced from my grandmother's um, trunk. And then also this continued um, conceptual work that I've been making my entire um, life. But now I really had the tools to contextualize it, right? And so the work is about enculturation, um, uh, indigeneity in the Southwest, and also um, my my um, family story in particular. So now I have three years of teaching experience under my belt, um, half the time TAing and half the time working as an essentially an adjunct professor um, for the SJSU photography program. Over the summer, I taught darkroom and digital um, to grade school girls at Santa Catalina. Um, I'm showing my work in the community and beyond. Um, I am currently in an education internship at the Weston Collective, developing curriculum for their after school darkroom program. I'm also helping um, expand their scholarship to benefit the youth and young adults on um, the Monterey Peninsula. It was super important to me that um, this internship was based in outreach. And um, so most recently, um, while continuing this inter internship, um, I, uh, I was hired as an education coordinator for BPM, which is a, a facilitator to the Institute of the Security Governance. And I'm taking my next steps in fulfilling dreams of making a positive impact in institutional education. Um, I, I wanna thank um, BPA for this opportunity to speak um, and give back just a little bit of what they have given me like throughout this whole process. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ashley. Thank you. All right, so uh, next we have uh, Samantha Saldana, so I'm just gonna pull up her uh, PowerPoint. Thank you for that. I don't know oh, what. 
All good. Hopefully I can I can get it up and running. All right. Uh, hi, everyone. So my name is Samantha. I'm a recent graduate at CSUMB uh, VPA. And this is my first semester at San Jose State um, in the graduate program for photography. Slide. Um, so I just wanted to talk about the impact of VPA on my practice. Um, as an individual, I feel like I received a strong foundation of ethical responsibility, community awareness, and critical thought. Um, and as an artist, I felt supported um, in an environment to explore different mediums. Um, I had a lot of hand on, hands on experience to develop skills, and there were plenty of opportunities to get involved um, locally. Slide. Um, so, talking about my capstone project, um, I will be honest, it definitely challenged me mentally and artistically. Um, I was pushed further than I had ever been pushed before. Um, and it definitely prepared me to be an effective communicator, especially about my own work, which is something that I've noticed um, I feel more prepared for as a grad student at San Jose State um, in comparison to my peers. So that was definitely a big boost in confidence. Um, slide. Uh, so this is my capstone for 2022. Um, it's titled Latinx Millennials, Personas, Expectations, and Intersectionality. Uh, this project centered on the millennial Latinx experience. Um, and for this, I sourced stories from the community to build narratives in my photography. Um, my project presented real life experiences and the effects of behavioral expectations on a community that is um, both Latinx and American. Um, so in the, in the project, I use layers of visual information to create a story. Um, I incorporated 3D surrealist sculpture. Sculpture is another one of my favorite mediums. And so it was a really, it was a lot of fun to be able to incorporate that into my photography. Um, the, the photos in, included uh, an old West aesthetic, which reflected my own personal experiences of living both um, here locally in Salinas and also in um, Arizona. But it also reflected the experiences of my community. Um, so Salinas is a very big ag town. Um, and so a very Western aesthetic is pretty um, relevant to this community. I also incorporated symbolism to engage my audience. And you can see that in exaggerated sculptures that are in these two photos. Um, so my audience was not only my generation, but my community at large, and also um, just the general community um, of uh, California and America beyond. Um, what I wanted was to provoke a discussion about our roles in regulating harmful expectations, such as stereotypes, gender roles, um, and the list can go on. And ultimately, I wanted to represent these individuals not as victims, but as empowered um, people that have the ability to exercise their own personal agency, um, choosing to break cycles, choosing to change, um, choosing to address their role in, um, in these traditions of harmful behavior. Um, and so that's pretty much the, the gist of my capstone. This is something I did recently, which I was really excited about. Um, I created an album cover for a local um, cumbia band called Quien Sabe. So I'd love to send that to you, Professor uh, Moreau Dio, um, Dr. Johnson. Um, so yeah, that was really exciting. You can see on the bottom left an image of my um, album cover as their backdrop at the show. So anyways, thank you so much for the time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. I, um, I actually saw the poster that you did when I was walking on Main Street and I stopped and actually looked at it and read it. So I didn't know you had designed it, but you did a great job because it actually stopped me. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I was like, Yen Sabe. Hmm. <laughs> Yes. All right. So uh, let me share uh, another screen here. Uh, so those are uh, two presentations by uh, two uh, visual and public art alumni. Uh, so uh, now I just want to move on before we, we do, we do a Q&A session. Um, I want to let you all know about some upcoming programs that we have. Uh, in the VPA gallery, we have a new uh, visual and public art gallery in the College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences building. Um, the next exhibit going up there is part of a two-year creative work fund project uh, that uh, we've been organizing with lead artists uh, 
Bin Don. Uh, Bin is an internationally renowned artist who works um, almost uh, entirely specifically in the daguerreotype process. Uh, and so this will be a real comprehensive exhibit with the public art component. Um, Professor Mendoza, myself, and um, Bin Don will actually be in Chinatown today installing some of the um, public art panels um, on Sold at Street in Chinatown. Uh, and the exhibit itself um, in the Visual and Public Art Gallery has about 20 um, unique daguerreotypes uh, that were uh, made uh, over, over the past two years. Uh, and that opens on October 3rd and the reception is free and open to the public. And that is on October 6th from 6 to 8 p.m. And then we have uh, on the far right here, we have the visiting artist, which is happening tonight, um, but that's an ongoing series. We have about six visiting artists that we bring to campus every academic year. Um, so certainly if you sign up for our newsletter, um, then you'll receive um, upcoming announcements for future visiting artists. Um, our next visiting artist is uh, Guillermo Galindo, followed by uh, Jessica Wimbley. And then, of course, we have our annual, this is our 25th annual uh, Day of the Dead celebration on November 2nd, 5 to 7, open to the public in the VPA complex. Um, Professor Mendoza, do you want to say anything else about the uh, Day of the Dead celebration? Yeah, I, I want to invite everybody. Uh, it, it's going to be our 25th uh, anniversary, and uh, once again, th this uh, this is part of our cur curriculum, which means that I teach a, a full semester of Dia de los Muertos, and it culminates on, on this uh, amazing uh, celebration. This year will be Wednesday, November 2nd. And this was created by, by Dr. Amalia Mesa Reyes. Great, thank you. And so, uh... Leave, uh, please, uh, in the chat, you can leave an email address and we'll sign you up for our newsletter or you can send an email to vpa at csumb.edu um, if you'd like to get more information on our program, uh, if you'd like to be put on our newsletter. Um, we uh, issue a newsletter um, uh, about every two weeks. And uh, that brings us to the end of this presentation. So um, we can take any questions that anyone might have at this time. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was really awesome. Happy yes, it to be was. Um, in Mayra's class, you could put questions in the chat for us and we can read them out. I do have a question here. I wanted to ask, what's a capstone? Great question. Thanks. That is a great question. So uh, every uh, major uh, at CSUMB is required to do a capstone project. Uh, the visual and public art uh, program is um, a little bit different in terms of how it is that this is done. This uh, a, a, a capstone, a senior capstone project is done part of, a, it's sort of a senior thesis project. And it's done at VPA very specifically over a year long process, meaning that you take um, capstone, you start in the fall and it carries you all the way through a year um, through various uh, mentoring, uh, through uh, capstone support. Um, and what you do is you conceptualize a project um, and you work one on one with a mentor, you work out with their uh, capstone faculty, you have a, a materials and methods course, it supports that as well. Um, and you, uh, uh, you know, the two projects here that Ashley and Saldana showed you were a part of their capstone project. And it's uh, not only a core requirement, but it also, I think, um, as stated by Ashley and Samantha, helps tremendously in terms of um, how it is that you really start uh, to think about yourself as an artist, you take ownership about the, you know, the work that you're doing, you're thinking critically, um, and it's really helping propel your work forward um, as you go out into the world. And there's a lot of presentations in that class. I've taught it last year and this year. And the presentations really allow you to center yourself because you are the expert on your work. And the more you present, the easier it becomes. And the more you think about your work, the more that people are able to ask you questions and you're able to articulate the depth of the work, not just the technical specificity, which you'll be developing over time, but the meanings and the connections to your culture, to your positioning, to your community. And it prepares you very deeply, as the two students have said, uh, for becoming an artist or for going to graduate school. Yes. And thank you. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. And Professor Mendoza also, you know, uh, just as uh, Dr. Johnson just uh, stated, uh, you know, the critical thinking skills are um, are really important in this area. 
And so this is really where it is that we, we help you thinking through conceptualizing, articulating your practice. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Are there any other questions? It was fantastic to have you present to all of us today. We thank you for your time and um, kind of the depth that we have now, knowledge, background knowledge about your program. And we look forward to seeing you at the Day of the Dead um, activities. And we're hoping to get a van here from Cabrillo and um, a bunch of our students here are would like to come with us. Well, we absolutely welcome you and hope that we see some of you here on um, November 2nd. Thank, Thank you all. Those were great presentations. So exciting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us.